Good afternoon. We'd like to welcome everybody to the Iowa State University Dairy Team Dairy Webinar. It's a monthly webinar. And today we are excited to have Dr. Gonzalo Ferreira, Associate Professor in the School of Animal Sciences uh, from Virginia Tech. Dr. Ferreira is originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina, where his family had a cropping and, and beef cow farm. He obtained his uh, degree in Argentina and since he was an undergraduate, he's been fascinated with forage management and cattle nutrition. Uh, he pursued a Master of Science in Dairy Nutrition from uh, University of Wisconsin-Madison and a PhD in Dairy Nutrition from Ohio State University. Uh, he worked in industry and he has been the dairy management extension specialist in the Department of Dairy Science at Virginia Tech since August of 2013. Many of you may have seen an article he did for Hordes Dairyman, I believe two months ago now, uh, on dairy margins. And that excited me, and I asked uh, him if he would come and, and do a webinar for us. And he was happy to do that. So uh, as I always say, Dr. Fiera, you have the podium. All right, thank you so much. Uh, and good afternoon for everybody. Uh, thank you, Fred, for the introduction and also for inviting me. Um, it was it was a, a, a very nice receiving that invitation after writing that article. So, um, as Fred said, I'm a dairy management extension specialist at the Genia Tech. And let me see why my slides are not. There we go. Uh, my background, I'm a dairy researcher and extension specialist here at Virginia Tech. I do a lot of research with forage quality and management. And my extension, I, I, it's linked towards uh, uh, risk management in, in dairy farms. So why is the reason we are here together uh, today? Well, as Fred said, a, a couple of years, uh, a couple of years, a couple of months ago, in May, um, I wrote, I usually write every month a column on the Horbs Dairyman Intel. Uh, those are kind of uh, short articles. And I put one article every every month. Um, and as you can see here, uh, this was published in, at the end of May. And the title uh, that we ended up putting was What's Ahead for Milk Margins? Um, and, and Fred read the article, apparently he agreed kind of with the message that I was giving there. Then I put another one, which was a follow-up uh, last month, uh, will dairy face a different type of storm? Um, and we are going to discuss all these uh, themes in, in this presentation. One thing I, I, I interact a lot with farmers uh, in the past and currently, uh, however, I have to disclose that I am not like a professional market analyst here. Uh, I, I just rely on the data that I obtain uh, from the different sources. And, and this is merely my, my interpretation. So uh, what was the situation in May, 2023 when I was preparing that article? Suddenly I decided, okay, let's go and see how the, the, the big context is that milk prices are starting to go move down. So I wanted to see how is the dairy margin coverage program doing. And one thing that I have seen when I got into the, into the website there is that I started to see that all the months, the program was triggering some payments. Um, Again, I don't know how familiar is the audience with the uh, Dairy Margin co Coverage Program, but it's a, a program, it's an insurance program in which the, the manager, the farmer uh, insures a certain coverage. 
And if the here you're ensuring a certain coverage for the margin, being the margin, the difference between the uh, all milk price and the feeding cost. Well, a, if the margin is below the coverage that you that you are insuring, uh, therefore you will have a, a, a payment. If you see here, the three months for those people that had a coverage of $8 or more, this insurance would have been triggered and therefore they would receive a payment. But on the on a, going to the big picture, what this is saying is that maybe the scenario is not as good as one can, can think. One thing that was striking to me was to see this margin of $6.08, um, which was quite low when we put it in, 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 in into the perspective of the crisis of 2015. And we will go a little more later. So another thing that I saw in this table, as you might know, the oil milk price is going down in, in some, from in this case, from January to February, it went down by $1.50, which is quite a big decrease. Corn prices, they are moving kind of around 6.8, 6.6. .6, and alfalfa has been moving slowly, but moving down and soybean meal again, bouncing around the $480 to $500. But let's go back to that idea that the margin here was $6.08. And if we look the the worst time in the 2015 crisis, I call it, uh, the worst was in April, uh, May, maybe of 2016. And there the margin was $5.76. I don't know if you remember, but I do remember at that time we were with the margin pro uh, dairy margin uh, protection program. And there was a lot of uh, hard feelings with that program because the 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 insurance was not triggering and therefore there were not payments for the farmers but what i want to show here is that pretty much we are very close on the margins to the worst moments of the 2015 and 2016 crisis even if you want to to compare exclusively with 2015 Right now, we have margins below those that we had in 2015. So the situation is not as, as good as we think from a margin perspective. As we will see later, maybe something that is keeping us kind of in a, in a, in a better position is that we are still dealing with relatively high uh, milk prices. One thing I forgot to mention, I will show you this figure quite sometimes uh, first of all on the x-axis we have the, oh, the this is a time series and then here on the y-axis we have three things the orange line represents the milk price okay here you will remember the milk price in 2014 a very good year touching the 25 dollars and then in 2022 we passed even those uh, 25 dollars and then in 2015, we were around uh, 16 to, to $15 per hand weight. The maroon line represents the feeding cost, okay? And you can see here, it has been increasing. And therefore, if you do the difference between the income, the, the milk price and the feeding cost, you have represented the income or feed cost. So this orange part of the graph represents the income over feed cost or the margin. So what, what can we say about this figure right now? Well, two things. The good news somehow is that dairy margin uh, coverage as a program is paying uh, for the low margin, okay? So somehow that is kind of good news. Um, there was a lot of hard feelings with MPP 
now with the dairy margin coverage, at least it looks like it's working uh, better. So that is one first conclusion. The other conclusion maybe is that we are in a bad scenario currently, as bad as the one in 2015. I don't know if we can say that it, it is even worse. I don't know about that, okay? But the key question is, if this is true, how is that possible when we are still having some decent uh, milk prices? They're going down, okay? But at that time in May, 2023, we were still uh, seeing some decent milk prices. Well, uh, let's talk a little about MPP before we address those. One thing I remember in, in, the, in, the, in the days of uh, the margin protection program, Somehow, I, I used to pitch a lot in the sense that, okay, yes, we do have very low milk prices, and that was very unfortunate. But at that time, one thing that was uh, also happening is that the, the commodity prices were not that high. Actually, they were quite, quite low. So somehow, that was good news. The thing is that because we had low milk prices and low feed prices, maybe the margins were not as bad, even though they were bad, okay? But they were not as bad or bad enough to trigger the payment, okay? So that upset, it, uh, uh, upset a, a lot of, of farms. One thing that I, was, uh, I always say about these insurance, insurance programs is that as I just said, these are insurances, they are safety nets. And I remember writing this article here and I was making the analogy of these insurances, you want to have a net here underneath, just in case that you fall. So if you want to get money from the program, you do have to fall, okay? So that is something that I used to highlight that time. Where I'm going with all these, well, at that time, if you see the maroon line here, the maroon area, feed prices were lower than usual, if you want. You can see that in 2014, the feed prices were higher and that allowed the margins, if you see here, actually the margins in 2016 and 2017 were kind of above the margins that we are having right now. Okay, so somehow the message is, okay, the situation, the, the scenario was not that bad when we look to the feeding cost. I'm not trying to say here that the situation was not bad at all. It was bad. The thing is that nowadays in the last two years, commodity prices have been going up and therefore feed prices have been going up and a very substantial manner okay and right now we have the highest feed cost in a, quite a very long time here we have a whole decade and we can see that we are having very high feed cost okay and that is the main reason why even though we are still having decent milk prices the high um, feeding costs are the ones that are putting this margin in very low levels and therefore I are triggering the insurances, okay? The dairy margin, uh, the dairy protection uh, coverage. The margin protection coverage, sorry. Um, so one thing that maybe uh, it is obvious from, from, from this analysis, obviously uh, margins are uh, beyond uh, milk prices. Not everything is about milk prices. You can have good milk price, but very high feeding prices, and therefore you will have poor margins. And the other thing is that typically we are hypersensitive to the very low milk prices. We are more sensitive to the low milk prices of 2015 than maybe to the high feed prices of, that we are currently seeing. So that was kind of the scenario in May, 2023. And that is what I, I wrote uh, in that article. 
what was the situation in May 2023 in the case of class three milk looking to the futures market. It was already on the downward trajectory at that time. You no, know, sorry, in January this year, the class three milk price in the in the Chicago Mercantile Exchange was nineteen dollars and fifty seven cents, and a few months later was already in sixteen dollars and sixty nine. So that was a drop of fifteen percent in the milk price. Fortunately, the corn grain started to have a downward trajectory as well. Uh, it went from 664 per bushel in January and, and, and May was going down to 555. And that also was a 16% uh, decrease in the price. That is kind of good news. And in the case of, sorry, this should be a soybean meal. Sorry, my copy and paste failed there. Uh, but soybean meal was in $449 per ton in January, and it was moving down to $414. So here, even though it was going down, that decrease in the price was not going as fast as the decrease in the milk price for sure. Now, what do we see in the uh, dairy margin coverage right now? And the situation is, I, 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 here we have included May, which was the last month reported. Apparently I was not that wrong in the idea of that a, a, a not very optimistic scenario was coming. You can see there we have two more months and even the margins were kept going down. Even to the point of $4.83 per, per hundred. Okay. I don't know if you recall this slide I prepared a few years ago when we were in the middle of the margin protection program. And here, this figure represents the margin. Okay. For MPP, when you had a margin above eight, you have no payment. When you have a margin between eight and four, you would have a payment as long as you paid the premium for the coverage. And if you didn't do anything, but just enrolling the program, paying the minimum, you would have a payment only if the margin goes below $4 per hand away. That is what they used to call, and we, we, we still call the catastrophic margin, okay? If you remember those dairy farmers for sure, they will remember 2009 and they will remember 2012. Those were two situations in which the margin reached the catastrophic levels. Well, so far since 2012, we haven't reached a point in which we're approaching the catastrophic level. However, right now, as I showed it before, we are in $4.83 uh, $4 per hundredweight on the dairy margin coverage, okay? So we are in a scenario pretty bad enough to, to be very close to those catastrophic uh, margins. So uh, again, what was the reading in May, putting all this together? In May, uh, we were around here. Here we have the prices for the class three milk futures for July, 2023. At that time, everything was going down and you can see everything kept going down regarding the milk price. It seems like everything was going to happen, that the same trend was going to happen with the commodities. However, that was not the case. We were here in May, everything was looking like going down but suddenly we had a rebound, okay? This here, by the way, uh, here we have the corn futures prices and we had a rebound that pretty much touched the $6.25 per bushel again. Fortunately, from the dairy perspective, this rebound then it started to go down again, okay? However, this rebound very likely is related to those catastrophic near catastrophic margins. 
Uh, here we have the soybean meal futures contract also for August 2023. And again, in May, everything was looking uh, like going down. It was going down. Then it, there was a rebound going down again. And now it's looking like going up again. Okay. So it seems like the feed costs are not going to decrease as fast as the milk price is reducing. So evidently this is going to impact on the margins in the near future even more. Just as a reminder uh, on the dairy margin coverage program, uh, we have a, a, a formula for considering the feed cost and uh, the main driver, the, the, the ingredient that has the heaviest component is the, the price of the corn grain. That is because the corn grain price determines the, the price of the, of the grain as a concentrate, but also the price of most of the forage as corn silage. Then we have the price of soybean meal um, with a minor component in the formula, but it's still there. And then also we have the component of alfalfa hay that uh, it's an intermediate uh, determinant of the milk price. Uh, looking a little more into the situation right now, this is another metric that I like to monitor. Uh, on a frequent basis. Uh, here we have from the global dairy trade. So this is a trading system. Uh, I think the, the main players are in New Zealand, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so this is an indicator of kind of the, the global uh, demand for milk. And usually I track this whole milk powder. And I've been tracking this since the, the beginning of the of this trading system in 2008. Here we can see 2009 going down, then passing the $3,000 per metric ton, this in this case, going up. Here we have a very high prices, uh, and this was in the good years of 2013 and 2014. Very good years for the dairy industry globally. And then we had that crash at the end of 2014 uh, and 2015. As you can see here, the whole milk powder, the price went even below $3,000. Then in 2016, 2017, it moved around, oscillating around uh, $3,000. And then we had the good times, recent good times, the end of 2021 and 2022 which it was passing the price again, $4,000. And now it's starting, unfortunately, it's starting to slow down again, going back to 3,000. I would say if this, in this, if this metric starts to go below 3,000, that would be, in my opinion, a very, uh, it would be a, a red flag and attention uh, because the, the market is slowing uh, a lot, very, very, very fast. So I don't want to play, I don't like the idea of playing pessimistic, but everything is looking as a very hard scenario for uh, the dairy industry in the, in the, in the near future, unless uh, milk prices obviously start to go up again. And obviously, unless uh, the feed prices start to go down again. Added to put some extra spice in all these, uh, I wrote another article recently in, in the same series in Horst Derryman. Uh, and the, the other component in, in this scenario that complicates, that may complicate a little further are the interest rates. Uh, as most of us would know, and you would hear on the radio, the Federal Reserve has been increasing the the interest rate substantially uh, to, to control the inflation. And obviously this may impact depending on, on what is the, the management of the debt at the farm level, this might have uh, some big impact on, on, on some dairies. So this is something uh, also to, 
to keep in mind. Another thing I, I just read this, this was published today actually, uh, about this, this uh, project of uh, increasing the overtime uh, working um, stipend to, to, to workers. Apparently they want, there are a few states that they're already with this program paying 1.5 times the hour when the employees uh, work more than 40 hours per week. And apparently there is an idea of making this uh, nationally. Um, this also, obviously this is going to be more longer term, but it's going to have a huge impact in addition to everything else that we have discussing, we have been discussing uh, previously. Uh, again, here I'm getting a little out, out of the, into the weeds, but it's good to keep an eye on this on this news. So so far, what can I tell? Maybe this is not a big news for most of us, okay? But there is a lot of uncertainty coming, and I I, I like sailing, and I usually give this as an example. Uh, in sailing, many times what we say is, will you prepare for the worst and you hope for the best? And that is maybe the, the, the main take home message that I want to give today. There is a lot of uncertainty right now in the dairy industry. And there is a lot that we could prepare at the farm level, uh, just in case that the situation gets a little more complicated. I'd like to say, um, here I use the word managers on purpose, okay? I, I always use the word farmers, but I like to stress that farmers, they should uh, be good managers. So a few things that, um, there are obvious things and um, likely everybody knows all these, but some things that managers should be doing in the, in the very short term. This is a figure I saw once um, in, in, in a conference that I really like that. I like it a lot, okay? And, and, and this is the concept of managing or influencing the management. Uh, what is the meaning of this? Well, in, in every farm or even in life or any business, there are certain things that we do have control. We have actual control of things, okay? Then there are certain things that I do not have control but I can influence. And then we have areas of no control. Some examples, area of no control, I cannot control the weather. Depending on the region, I could, I could irrigate maybe. And that, that would be a, a way of uh, reducing the area of no control. What is the area of control? Well, I can control how much I, I spend somehow, okay? I can make the decision. Instead of buying a new, a new tractor, I can make the decision right now and say, okay, I will not buy a tractor this year. I will postpone that and I keep going with whatever I have right now, okay? That there I have an area of control. If it breaks, that could be a, a different story. But if in my plan, I was, I was ready to buy a, or do a major in, investment, maybe I can, I can postpone that look into better time. And then the other one would be the area of influence. Uh, being a nutritionist, obviously we want to feed the animal to produce more milk, but at the end, who is going to make the change is the animal, okay? I cannot make the animal uh, produce more milk, but I can influence the cow comfort, I can influence the nutrition, and all that to make uh, the cow produce more milk. So the idea in this manage or influence the management, hopefully we can increase the areas of control and also we should in increase the areas of influence. You, we have to be careful on, 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 on trying to increase the area of influence because in, in that try, uh, we might spend a lot of money. So sometimes that can become a, a double-edged uh, sword. 
Another thing that I'd like to say, we are, it looks like we are getting into another uh, bad scenario. I don't, I don't know if we should say another crisis, but let's say that we are approaching a bad scenario. One thing that managers should do is to know where they are standing. The same way when I'm sailing, I'm in an open water, I do need to know where I am at a certain time and a certain point, okay? Same thing at the farm you have to know what are your key performance indicators. Hopefully you would be able to benchmark, compare against some other farmers, and hopefully you would be uh, doing some sensitivity analysis just in case. What if the corn price goes up again? What if the milk price keeps going down? What if the market starts working, driving in a different way or something like that? So those are things that knowing where the, the, the farm is as a business is super important. The other one, cow should be the priority number one, for sure. The money is going to come from these cows, okay? So everything, all the effort should be put on keeping those cows productive, healthy, and profitable. Okay, so keep an eye on transition cow management, work with your people, work with your vets, go uh, uh, do work with your nutrition. Cow help, try to keep cows as healthy as, as you can. For that, keep cow comfort to the best possible and also manage heat, heat stress. We are in the middle of the summer right now, so everything is important that in that regard. I love these. I, I think I rewarded it um, because I heard this from Dr. Jones and Gordy Jones several years ago, maybe 20 years ago. Um, but I really like that 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 line saying like the cows, you should treat them that as, as if they were in a hotel. When they are returning from the parlor, you should say to them, welcome, your food is served and your bed is fixed, go and rest. Okay, so again, uh, nutrition, transitional cow management, cow comfort, keep an eye on that. Do the best that you can so we can keep everything running smoothly. The other thing is now is the time to look for inefficiencies. Okay, we are not there in the, in the worst time, but if it gets worse, Looking to the inefficiencies in the worst times is, is too late. So now is the time to, to go ahead and look for those inefficiencies. Look to the shrinkage of forages and also look to the shrinkage of your concentrate, okay? Feed shrinkage can make you a very big hole in your pocket. Sorry, the typo there, it should be in your pocket. Uh, way back refusals and monitor dry matter intake. If you are feeding too much and wasting too much, like in this case, then you are going to be wasting your money. So be careful with that. And also work with your feeders, work preparing a, a very consistent TMR and delivering appropriately the feed. Push your feed uh, as, as frequently as you can. Try to get the most from your feed. I am biased. My research is on forage quality and management, but I am convinced that in, 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 in this crisis, if you have a good stock of good quality forage, especially corn silage, you will navigate the crisis uh, in very good shape. So hopefully you can have a, a good inventory of corn silage uh, we are still on time on the on on depending on the areas for on, on the corn growing season that we can try to to seek the 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 most the highest yield possible with the best quality possible uh, and again if you can think about having a carryover for the following season consider that as well Again, you should prepare for the worst. And forages, here we can enter a discussion on the market value, on the financial value. From the financial perspective, 
And in the crisis, the financial perspective is super important. Uh, the more forage and the best quality forage that you have, likely the easier is going to be for the manager to navigate the, the crisis. Um, also, finding the inefficiencies or making sure that, that the cows are comfortable uh, and have everything ready for them. All that depends on people, okay? If, some, if there is something that is going to make that happen, it's your people, people working at the farm, okay? So this is a good time to summon the team and create awareness. Okay, the situation is becoming a little complicated. We need, we need the farm needs, your effort, your commitment, your engagement to make all these good things, to make these cows produce the best possible. In that line, right, revise the standard operating procedures, make sure that everybody has access to the SOPs, make sure that everybody is doing everything as you want them to be done. In that line, you have to retrain your employees. Do not assume that your employees are doing things the way that you want to make them done, okay? So make sure that people is doing what the SOP is saying. Um, and sometimes, People also, they get some, they, they adapt the SOPs uh, and, and they, they, they put some, uh, I don't know if I should say bad habits, but you get out of the track a little on the procedure. So this is a good opportunity to bring them back, explain why you want to bring them the, back into the SOPs in a good way and finally keep your people motivated. The other thing is, even though the cow is priority number one, uh, very close there, or I don't know if I should put it above or below, whatever, cash flow is also key here, okay? So be careful on how you manage your cash flow. Your business might be quite profitable, but in many cases, cash, my, my cash, I mean, the, the profit might be like, a, like water in your hands, it's flowing out, okay? So be careful on how you manage your expenses. In that line, best advice possible, prepare a, a comprehensive financial budget. Make sure you do a projection uh, for the next year. Where are you going to have the major expenses? Some things that maybe you can postpone for the future uh, and all that. Obviously, monitor the income and feed cost uh, on a cow and on a herd basis, okay? Remember that the milking cows are the ones that are paying the expenses of the dry cows and of the replacements. So be careful. Make sure that you do a comprehensive financial budget. Prioritize expenses, okay? Uh, saving a few dollars in, in one ton of milking cow concentrate might be way uh, more uh, advantageous than saving a few dollars in the milk replacer as an example okay so work on your priorities look on those expenses there are a few like uh, feeding expenses replacement labor okay those are the ones that are going to drive the profitability in a greater manner than the rest. Uh, stick alternative ingredients, okay? One thing that I learned from grad school, uh, from my mentor, Dr. B. Weiss and Dr. St. Pierre, there are no ingredient requirements, there are nutrient requirements. So that doesn't mean that you have to buy a certain ingredient. You don't, you are not obligated to buy, I don't know, a, a cotton seed or something like that. You 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 should go and and and, and find alternatives if the feeding costs are becoming uh, very high. The other thing I I don't see a lot of people talking about this, but be careful, especially for the small farms. 
be careful on the debt on feed. If you are delaying the payment a lot on your feed and you put that rate and this 1.5 per month maybe is a rate that they were before the interest rate were starting to to go up. So you can you can lose a lot of money paying interest to the feed mill. So be careful with that one. Uh, and also, and here I'm not going to say much about it, but monitor and control family expenses, especially on those small uh, dairy farms. The other thing is uh, we have some risk management tools. Obviously we spoke already about the dairy mar margin coverage. We talk about the dairy, oh, sorry, I, we didn't talk, but we had the dairy revenue protection. And also I'm, I'm going to touch a little on the futures and options uh, as, as tools that we can manage some, some risk. I already told you the dairy mar uh, margin coverage program uh, is, is an insurance program and it's already paying. Uh, so that is good news. Typically the enrollment is going to start in, uh, last year started in October, if I'm not wrong. So maybe you should be considering the new enrollment for the 2024 uh, year. I'm not, uh, I'm not very familiar with the Dairy Revenue Protection Program, but my understanding is a more suitable uh, insurance program for larger farms. So uh, you, you, you have this alternative that maybe dairy mar margin coverage is not as good for the larger farms. Here, there would be an option. And this is a mixture between insurance and also looking to the future, to the, to the prices. And then the other tool would be to, to lock prices in the, in the futures and options. Obviously right now might not be the best time to lock prices, but I would be alert. I maybe you can start a conversation with brokers, kind of being prepared for what if we have a rebound on the on the milk price in the near future. One thing, uh, Fred told me that that maybe the audience here on the on the west side of of Iowa are larger farms than what I was uh, that I was expecting okay but one one thing that i hear a lot about the use of futures and options is that oh no that is for large farms well it's not really that way uh, here i put an example a farm with 150 cows milking cows producing 90 pounds per per day that would be about a uh, 400,000 pounds of production in one month and if you think about that that would be equivalent to two contracts in the futures market. So uh, 150 cows is not a huge farm and still is big enough to uh, lock prices in the futures market if that would be the, the, the situation. Another misconception that I, I've learned in, in recent years, we've been preparing some programs for about futures and options for dairy farmers is that brokers, they do charge a commission, but it's not a huge commission. Just to put some perspective, the brokers are going to charge you a commission to get in and to get out in the in the futures market. And they charge you, well, now it could be a little more. I don't know if inflation affects that, but about 45 to $60 per trade. That is what a broker told me a few years ago. If you do two trades, one to get in and the other one to get out at $50 per trade, that is $100 per contract. If $100 is in one contract and one contract is 2,000 hundredweight, at the end, the fee that you're paying is five cents per hundredweight, okay? So yes, you are paying for a service from the broker, but you are paying five cents per hundredweight. It's not as much as one would expect. I would say I learned from delivering some programs on this subject lately that uh, I know that some cops might be charging more than these five dollars, uh, five cents per hundred, about ten to eleven cents per hundred. What do you do on the on the futures uh, market? Well, what you said you do is you lock the price. Let's say that you like a price of eighteen dollars per hundred. If the price here we have the on 
on, on the futures market. If the price goes down, as it is going right now in the current scenario, then you will have a gain in the futures market. This is like a two lane road. Even though you're losing on the cash market, you will be gaining on the futures. If the, the bad side of here is if the price goes up as it happened in 2022, then you will gain in the cash market, but you're going to lose on the futures market. Uh, let's see one thing. When I was preparing some of this information in the past, I was in February of 2023, and the class three milk price was starting to go down in the, on the on the futures market. If uh, you would have locked the price, let's say here is the the contract for June 2023. At that time, the price was uh, 18 dollars and 50 cents the final price flows at $14.93, okay? So by using this tool, locking this price, even though you're losing a lot of money in the, in the cash market, the dairy farmer could have uh, won some money, some profit in the futures market. If you're considering, uh, as I said, right now might not be the, time, the, the best time, but if you're, considering this tool in the near future, one good advice, gather information from your farm so you can get the basis, the historical basis, so you can at least have some idea, you can predict what would be your mailbox, mail price based on the futures market price. Uh, the bad side of the futures market, uh, I will give this scenario, let's say in June of 2021, the price was $19, uh, almost $19. If you sold your contract there at $19, in, and remember, put some perspective, 2021, we were getting out of the crisis. $19 suddenly was not that bad. And then you lock the price and the price went down. Somehow you were protected, but it started to go up and up and up and up and then in 2022 you are in a price of 24 dollars in this case the the farmer would have lost a lot of money on the futures market um, even though gaining a lot of money in the cash market so this would be an adverse situation of the use of the futures market the option would be to uh, work with your broker and deal with the options as a tool. What is the, the good part of the of the options? Well, the thing is that if you lock the price at $18 and then the price starts to move up, you do not have the obligation of using the contract and therefore you are not going to lose money on the uh, futures market. So, we are reaching the end. Uh, as I said, if you're going to use these tools, seek advice from a broker. If you're going to trade in the futures and options market, right now, everything looks very unfavorable. There is no need to, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know if I should say that, but uh, I would not uh, be logging any, any, unless we are certain that this is going to keep going down again. If you want to use these tools, you, you should contact a broker and start a relationship. In summary, the, the scenario uh, right now, the scenario is not, is not the best, obviously. The, the big question is, is it going to get worse? Uh, under that possibility, like again, going back to the, the, the analogy, uh, as the possibility of being in the middle of the ocean, and having a, a, a storm coming, you should be preparing yourself for that possibility. Uh, I like to say that at the, at the farm, we should not be paralyzed by analysis. Uh, we should be constantly re-evaluated, okay? So evaluate where you are, know where you are, what are your inefficiencies, adjust according to those inefficiencies, make a new plan, make your financial budget, 
uh, plan ahead and then implement your plan, okay? You as a manager should be uh, managing. You should be dynamic all the time, looking forward to to improve and navigate that, that situation. Again, I take the opportunity, Fred, because I, this is the line of work that I've been doing. Uh, I want to thank you first for inviting me to present here. I want to uh, thank also, also Horst Derryman for trusting me to write these columns uh, on a frequent basis. And also I want to thank uh, the Southern Extension Risk Management Education Program, which has been supporting a big part of my extension programming uh, here at Virginia Tech. And with that, Fred, I thank you everybody for listening to me. Thank you very much, Gonzalo. Sorry for that. Yep. We appreciate the information you shared with us. And I'd like to invite those who are on uh, with us. Uh, if you've got a question, uh, we're a small group. You can either unmute and tell us who you are and ask the question, or you can type a question in the chat box and we will try to get that question out to everybody. Not, not seeing any. Go ahead. I did not hear who was speaking or see. Uh, I will go ahead and start some questions. Uh, can you give us a rule of thumb? Uh, on your recommendations for stored feed versus when you're purchasing feed, especially in this margin market we're in. So the question is, if I understand correctly, recommendation distinguishing the, the store and the purchase feed, is that what you said? Yeah, I uh, heard that yeah. stores feed versus one that has to purchase feed. Yeah, well, I, I, let's put it this way. Uh, when you tell me store feed, I, I think it comes to my mind on farm grown feed, obviously, and that is going, is going to be the cheapest resource, okay? So there is where I think we have a lot of opportunity is going to be the cheapest feed that we can get at the farm. Uh, I would put a lot of effort on uh, avoiding shrinkage, minimizing the shrinkage. That means uh, obviously good covering, uh, using appropriate uh, plastic oxygen barriers if needed. Um, that is on the side of the silage. Then on the on the feed out, uh, have a good defacer or a good defacing management if you don't have a defacer. Uh, so all those tiny details at the end of the long period, okay, maybe on a daily basis, you don't think it's a lot, but but when you 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 some day after day, those become super important. And then obviously on the on the purchase feed, uh, first of all, those are going to be likely the most expensive ingredient. So the little that you waste there can have a great amount of money. So. Uh, again, if you use grain beans, uh, that that uh, that thing that goes outside the mixer, or 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 that uh, you know you have the augers running uh, and the tractor is not in, in the good position, all those details again, working with people should be super important because you 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 can waste a significant amount of money there. I don't know if there is where where you were going for it there. Yep. Okay, I'm not seeing a, a chat question. I'll, I'll continue. Uh, you'd mentioned interest rate rates. Uh, how's that worldwide interest rates going to affect our milk market? How interest rates are going to affect the uh, market? I, I, I this the is most kind of. At the most honest war. answer, I would say, I would say, I don't know exactly. Okay, I don't know uh, enough to to give you a, an answer there. Uh, 
on how it would affect on, on a global basis. Uh, geez, if I, I, I rather pass this one, Fred, uh, I, I would be speculating too much in a risky okay. way. Very good. One last question that had come in. Uh, in today's market, we're seeing the trend obviously downward. How important is cash in hand versus paying off debt or prepaying things? Any recommendations? Yes, I. I this is this is more. Uh, yes, this is more my 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 personal belief. Okay, my personal advice. I would first of all look to somebody a financial risk management advisor to to get deeper on that but having liquidity in the crisis is you you having a good mattress uh, you will sleep better if you know what i mean uh, it's super hard for a dairy farm to 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 have reserves and to be to have liquidity but if you have that mattress, uh, I think it, it's super important. Now, linking this to the interest rates, obviously you have to pay attention on how interest rate, is it a fixed interest rate or is it a variable interest rate? If these increases in the interest rate are becoming, let's say that they are variable, then you maybe you need to reconsider. The thing also you have to see the long term. Here, I think you, you you remember that slide that I told about the different simulations and the scenarios and so on. Uh, look into the interest. You should uh, do a lot of that. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, building scenarios. What if? Then I would do this or I would do that. And um, believe it or not, they are not very hard to do right now. If you are a little proficient doing using Excel. Microsoft Excel or any spreadsheet as a tool, you can do some projections on the interest based. And actually, I've been reading some some articles based on in Horst Derriman uh, on how these increases in the interest rate would affect um, the dairy farm. So again, uh, in the crisis, liquidity is very important, but Keep an eye on the interest rates, especially if they are variable interest rate, and if your solvency uh, is, is is very low, right? Uh, that means that if your debt over assets is extremely high, you you, you have to do a, a, a very holistic financial risk management analysis. I see that my counterpart at I-29 Moon University is on the program with us, uh, Jim Salford, Dairy Specialist in Minnesota. Jim, have you got a question or something to add to the conversation? You know, I don't know if I have anything specific other than if anybody knows, when do you, when do you foresee these margins improving? Because right now, you know, I don't know about where you're out, but boy, that's sure a topic of conversation. And these cheese prices are so low. Of course, we're in a cheese market. So you don't have yeah. any insight based on what you have when we might see these margins start turning around? Honestly, right now in the very short term, uh, again, I don't I don't want to play pessimistic, but I don't see the margins turning around uh, in the in the in the very short term. Uh, as I mentioned, all, most of the indicators are, are on the milk side are looking down and uh, on the feed side are looking down, but suddenly they're starting to go back again. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I totally dislike giving this a uh, uh, negative scenario, but, but I, I, I don't see this changing in, in, in the very short term. Well, I'm not seeing any additional questions. I uh, certainly appreciate the information you've shared with us. Uh, folks who are interested and like to come back and, and look at parts of it again, I'll make the announcement that it will be archived uh, at our I-29 Mu University uh, website. Uh, give me a couple of 
four days, five days, and we should have that up. And because we're always looking to improve, uh, there in the chat box, if you click on uh, that survey uh, and share some information, uh, it's very short. It's only four or five questions, so it won't take you very long. But again, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fenero. I appreciate your time and the information. And for the audience, we'll look forward to seeing you in September when we have our next uh, program. Thank you for the invitation again.